I will be a spider podcaster. Better yet, with my unparalleled genius and my boundless ambition, I'll be a better spider podcaster than you ever were. From this day forth, I shall become the superior spider podcaster. Because your geek history lesson on the superior Spider-Man is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason the Superior Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or spider from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about it in about an hour. And all day today, my brain has been singing the phrase Superior Spider-Man to the tune of the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon. Can we hear a rendition of this? Sure. It's like superior, superior Spider-Man. And your mind just did this automatically. It just does super things like that. I mean, that is a good theme song. I would have never <laughs> thought to have switched those adjectives. The same syllables. So, oh, okay. Well, cool. Well, listeners, welcome. We are going to be talking about the superior Spider-Man today because, look, you know, if you listen to this podcast, we are big believers in not letting movie con- studios control our lives. Oh, and, boy. You know, Spider-Man uh, sp- across the Spider-Verse was uh, supposed to have been released around this time. We're very close. And it has been delayed. It's been a common theme today. Uh, or today the, specifically. Today specifically. <laughs> s- 17 movies are delayed. Did you get the news, Ashley? Yeah, I heard they pumped Aquaman back one more time. And Citizen Kane, which I thought was, <laughs> I was surprised because that movie was released, you know, over 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. How could you delay it? People have seen it. They delayed it. Anyways, um, you know, we were going to have a lot of spider related mm-hmm. episodes. Mm-hmm. And I don't care that Sony delayed this because we were really excited for this movie. We're going to continue our journey into the spider lessons that we've been planning anyway. If you listen to our James Bond series from last year, this is very similar. So whenever they decide to drop that movie, if you stick with us, you'll have a whole series of spider lessons, hopefully of a bunch of characters that appear in that movie. Uh, This week's episode also had some research provided by our research assistant and assistant writer, Diego Nunez, who we want to thank him for this valuable or superior Research, one would say. Uh, so without further ado, if we want to be a superior podcast, I think we need to jump right into the Ten Cent origin. What is that, Ashley? That is the first part of the podcast where Professor Jason is going to teach you all of the who's it's and what's it's galore about Superior Spider-Man in case you go to a Spider-Verse-themed cocktail party and somebody doesn't know what's up with this character. The Superior Spider-Man is a character that was published by Marvel Comics. The original series was published by Weekly. It was a limited series. It was published from January of 2013 to September of 2014. There is a total of 33 issues. It was created by Dan Slott and Ryan Stegman, written by Dan Slott, with artists Ryan Stegman, Humberto Ramos, and Giuseppe Caminicoli, I believe. Uh, Now, of course, the Superior Spider-Man is still Peter Parker, but technically he's also Otto Octavius, um, and some of his powers are similar to Peter's. Uh, Ashley, would you like to uh, make a guess on what the powers of the Superior Spider-Man are? Uh, The proportional strength, speed, and something of a spider. (laughs) Incorrect. The superior proportional strength, speed of a spider. Uh, Any other guesses on their powers? Uh, Web slinging? Incorrect. Superior web slinging. Mm. Uh, Spider sense? Incorrect. A superior spider sense. All right, that's three, so that's comedy rules. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, the funny thing about this is that, uh, yeah, Otto has all the same powers except they're superior. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Let's get to the meet cute. What is that, Ashley? The meet cute is the second part of the podcast where we tell you the first time we meet did this character and how cute it was. Uh, so our, uh, you know, research assistant Diego Nunez has my first memory of this was when it was first announced. I, it was before I got back into comics and I remember it making big waves and a lot of people talking about it. Uh, Actually, when was your meet cute for the superior Spider-Man? I first learned about superior Spider-Man when I was working in the first comic book store I ever worked at. And I believe this is kicked off in issue 300. 
Uh, 700. 700. I'm so sorry. No, 600. I'm sorry. 600. Mm-hmm. I knew it was 100. It was an anniversary issue. Uh, because the cover is an homage to the black suit 300 cover. Mm. Um, and this kicks it off. And, uh, issue 600 is the issue where like the actual body swapping happens. Yes. Uh, and then Superior Spider-Man spins out of that. So that was when I, for, I had to sell it a lot. So. Oh, you had I, to sell the specific issue. Yeah, to be yeah, like, here's the issue where Peter Parker technically yeah, dies. Yeah. Well, sort, sort of. of. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time saying like the same paragraph about <laughs> what this issue was. Mm-hmm. So that's how I first me did and cuted the Superior Spider-Man. How about you? It's going to be the same. Yeah. It's like they announced it's the very book. recent. It, yeah. It, yeah. It's very recent. So it's not that, um, you know, um, I want to say to people um, before you know, we get to the history one on one section. We're going to dive deeper into Superior Spider Man. We're going to have a great conversation. But if you like conversations of myself and Ashley mm-hmm. and you want more, this week's Geek History Lesson Extra is going to be an episode on why did comic fans hate the Superior Spider Man? There's a very big contingent of comic book fans that despise this storyline. So we're going to dive into that over there. Um, it's Geek History Lesson Extra is very similar to Geek History Lesson. It's a lot like this, except we curse. Uh, so you can head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N to get podcasts like that and also get podcasts like jason and jeremy john about justice league where we review every single episode of the justice league animated series we're in the middle of uh, season two with that so you get four bonus episodes of ghl extra you get a marvel club episode here and there and two episodes of justice pod every single month check it out at patreon.com thanks to all the super friends that support us over there and now ashley uh for the start of the history 101 yes i would love if you just would give us a brief origin of Spider-Man. Who is Spider-Man? Well, and, 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 and what are some, you know, just basic things we need to know about Spider-Man? Okay, so we're going to do this one last time. Oh, Hi, wow, cool. my name is Peter B. Parker, and when I was 16, <laughs> I was bitten by a spider. My Uncle Ben died, and I used my power and responsibility to become Spider-Man, or your, the amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I'm very proud of us for that. Well pulled. Thank I you. Uh, Well pulled. Uh, all right. Now we're going to see if you could follow the rules of comedy. <laughs> Will you give us a brief origin of Dr. Octopus? Okay, we're going to do this for the first time. My name is Otto Octavius. You may know me because I kind of look like uh, Alfred Molina. And I was a fat, nerdy scientist, and those were seen as bad things. A bunch of uh, metal arms fused to my spine, and now I'm a bad guy with a full cut. <laughs> Uh, yes, basically it. Uh, Spider-Man, of course, Peter Parker, the protector of Queens, the web slinger. Uh, we all know Spider-Man. And then Dr. Octopus, uh, of course, is um, the wonderful Alfred Molina. If you want a uh, primer on those before you listen to the rest of the episode, we do have a two-barter on Spider-Man. We have a two-barter Spider-Man. And we have an Otto Octavius episode that you can listen to as yes, well. Yes, that was actually le- earlier this year. Which led directly to this episode. Oh, I wrote it down. It was episode 393. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I need to give you a brief prologue on the superior Mm -hmm. spider-man by telling you about the story called dying wish Mm -hmm. so back in the amazing spider-man number 600 it is revealed that dr octopus is dying from injuries he sustained through all the years fighting superheroes mainly spider-man uh this started an expansive 100 issue journey where otto basically has to deal with the fact that he's dying Um, And after being foiled for the last time from his attempt to wipe out over everybody, the 7 billion people on the earth because of a global warming plot, Otto is left on a life support machine and he's incarcerated in the raft. Now, Ashley, do you know what the raft is? The raft is shields underwater, sometimes floating above water prison uh in the mcu it is um but it is it is run by shield it's a maximum security prison uh located near rikers island i'm not certain if i know it is floating i don't know if it goes under the water though, i thought some the of comics. the cells were underwater but that could, i could be conflating the movie version yes. that's okay uh, that's okay uh in his final days otto is unable to move and hardly speak up uh, except uttering the name Peter Parker. Now, this was in issue 700. Excuse mm-hmm. me. I actually got the numbers uh, switcherooed. Um, in response to Otto's call for Peter, the Avengers call Spider-Man, and Spider-Man speaks with, in, with Otto in private. In a bizarre move, 
Spider-Man reveals his full identity to Otto Octavius. And this is the moment in reality that we learn that Otto swapped bodies with Peter Parker. And Peter Parker is actually trapped inside Otto Octavius' body on a life support system. He was saying, Peter Parker, that he is Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. Now, this is explained that during the times that Spider-Man and Otto had encountered each other over the last hundred issues, uh, that Otto had this VR control helmet that he used to control his Octobots. So these are these little bots that look like octopuses. They go, you know, they run around. Um, and this, one of these Octobots um, eventually got incorporated into the tech of Spider-Man's armor. At one, during one sport storyline, Spider-Man used armor during this time. And this actually gave Otto complete access to Peter Parker's mind without him knowing about it. Mm -hmm. um, this was the key to his final survival plan. Using an Octobot to plug into Spider-Man's subconscious and write over his memories to imprint Otto's. Effectively mind-swapping Spider-Man's consciousness into Otto's decaying body. Peter figures if Otto was mentally able to take control of an Octobot from a previous Octo body, then Peter in the dying body of Octo, Otto, excuse me, might be able to do the same. So he manages to take control of the Octobot to send out a message calling any and all villains to help rescue him from the raft in exchange for two million dollars apiece. Hydra Man, Scorpion, the Trapster answer the call, breaking Otto's body out of prison. There is a Climactic battle between Otto and Peter. Otto is actually secretly Peter. Peter is actually secretly Otto at the base of Avengers Tower. Time is running short. Peter is minutes away from dying in Otto's body. And for the lack of a better phrase, Peter performs a mind meld onto Otto. And during this, Otto in their mindscape understands Peter as well as Peter understanding Otto. He experienced all the loss and tragedy that Peter has endured in his lifetime. And he also understands what the role of being the Spider-Man truly means. Um, Peter finally dies in Octavius' body, but his death does affect Otto in Peter's body, realizing that he has to take advantage of this second opportunity to do some good in the world. And Otto makes a vow. He says, I swear, I will be Spider-Man. Better yet, with my unparalleled genius and my boundless ambition, I'll be a better Spider-Man than you ever were. From this day forth, I shall become the superior Spider-Man. And of course, that is what I was alluding to in the opening of our podcast. So basically from this point forward, I just want to say if I say Otto, it is Otto in Peter Parker's body. Yeah. Then in like Superior Spider-Man issue one or issue three, like his finger moves without him intending Shh. to. And you know, you know, immediately they don't bury that shit at all. And then the series called The Superior Spider-Man is born. Now, Ashley... Spider-Man has had a lot of adjective-led titles like Superior Spider-Man. Um, I have a list. I don't have a full list. It is impossible to create a complete list, but I do have a list. There's a lot of them. And I want to ask you, actually, you know, of course, The Amazing Spider-Man is the, you know, the, the flagship book. What's your favorite Spider-Man title or Spider-Man act? Adjective title. Spectacular. Is it spectacular? Mm -hmm. You like the spectacular Spider-Man? Yeah, I like the uh, double the alliteration. alliteration. Yeah, it sounds cool. Uh, I like Friendly Neighborhood as well. That evokes a certain uh, sort of like small townness, which I know it's hilarious because Peter Parker's from New York City, but mm -hmm. it, it, it grounds him in a really interesting way. Nice. Uh, well, here are some of those titles. There's The Amazing Spider-Man, The Savage Spider-Man, The Spectacular Spider-Man. Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. That one is my favorite. Is it? Yeah. Why? I like Peter Parker, the okay. sensational, because I think he's Peter Parker first and Spider-Man second. Interesting. Um, the sensational Spider-Man, which is, the, I like that one too. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, mm -hmm. Avenging Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, Symbiote Spider-Man, Non-Stop Spider-Man, Spine Tingling Spider-Man, uh, and then, uh, you know, that's it. Big time. Well, then there's also Spider-Man. There's one just called Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of them. And this is uh, following up that tradition. So now we're into the Superior Spider-Man series fully. Okay. Otto spends his first day as Spider-Man facing off against a newly formed Sinister Six 
that does not have Doc Ock, because we know one thing about Doc Ock, your favorite team, the Sinister Six, Ashley, uh, <laughs> formed by Doc Ock. This version of the Sinister Six includes Shocker, Beetle, Boomerang, Overdrive, the Living Brain, and Speed Demon. I would also like it known that I'm the one who keeps pitching that we do a best Sinister Six ever, and you're the one who keeps nixing it. I just don't think there's enough there. <laughs> there's literally only good six good members. It's going to be a pretty obvious list right out the gate. Um, so Otto as Spider-Man gets pummeled by speed demon demon, but enough to make him realize that Peter's mission as Spider-Man is absurd. And he quits it right at that moment. The sinister six are baffled as Spider-Man just leaves. <laughs> um, and they try to goad him back into the fight by attacking a police officer. Instinctively Otto saves the police officer from the fight questioning why he did that. Cause he doesn't care about the police. Now the sinister six plan their next robbery at Horizon Labs, which is like the super tech lab where Peter Parker is now working at this time in the comics. As the six break in, Otto is ready, and he stages an entire scene to capture them, involving the media to record Otto's first victory as the superior Spider-Man. Otto defeats all of them. He starts to brutally beat down Captain Boomerang, ready to take it a step further and try to kill him, but suddenly he finds himself holding back. What Otto doesn't realize is that there is a secret cast member in this wacky sitcom of a comic. Basically, Force Ghost Peter Parker still exists somewhere in the brain of Otto Octavius. And Peter has every intention to stop Otto and reclaim his life. Sometimes... In this book, he can be a voice that influences Otto, um, but rarely is he able to do anything significant. Sometimes he can take minimal control, like lifting a finger, mm. like as Ashley was alluding to. Now, Otto, he's Spider-Man, and he wants to be sensational, so he wants to create efficiency for his role whoa, as Spider-Man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought he wanted to be superior. He does, but he wants to be superiorly sensational, mm. yeah, or sensationally superior. He wants to uh, he wants to be like Billy Flynn. That's right. He wants to give him the old razzle dazzle. He wants to give him the full razzle dazzle with maximum efficiency. <laughs> um, so he'll be alerted of a crime. Um, he makes lots of little spider bots like mm -hmm. his Octobots. And he has them just patrol the city. They're cool, actually. They are really cool. Yeah. I think they should have made a toy of them, to be honest. I with you. agree. Yep. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Action figure spotlight. Action figure spotlight. For a thing that we want. Uh, they should have made one of those Octobots. But Ashley, um, we can share this on the GHL social media. Uh, if you'd like to make a note of this, I have an action figure of the Superior Spider-Man, and uh, he has his tentacles and everything like that. And it's the original. It's the secondary S Superior Spider-Man costume with his big bug eyes, and, and the bottom half of his costume is black. Yeah, and in this action figure spotlight, we have uh, an action figure spotlight on a piece of floss that Intern Brego brought in to contribute to this episode. That's his action figure. Say what now? <laughs> There's a piece of floss on the ground. <laughs> I don't know why you have to listen to that. It's so it's funny. I think it's spider webbing. Oh, there you go. I don't Thanks, think it's Brego. floss at all. Thanks for contributing. By the way, I will just I will say that there was at one point where I had hung up my Spider-Man action figures with floss to to. Uh, yeah, it actually is a perfect scale for yeah. <laughs> for I the would, Marvel Legends. I would take a piece of floss, I would wrap it around a thumbtack, and then thumbtack it into the ceiling. Yeah, we had a uh, silk up up there at one point. We had a too. whole spider family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're all in the um, comic rack. That's right, spider rack. Um, so. He has spider bots. He'll be alerted of a crime. He'll and he gets to determine whether this crime is worth his time. Otherwise, if he doesn't think it's worth his time, he will transfer the issue to the appropriate department. He even <laughs> uploads facial rec recognition software. So any criminal he, he is trying to track, he has their exact location, um, you know, and this allows him to actually do more of Peter's personal affairs. So he doesn't have to constantly be crime frightening. Um, eventually the villain Massacre escapes and goes on a massive killing spree. Now, Massacre is a Dan Slott, uh, the writer that created the Superior Spider-Man. It's one of his villains. Here's his origin. It, Marcus, who was Massacre, and his wife were accidentally harmed during an attack on his Wall Street treating company for losing a client's money. Marcus survived, but his wife did not. And shrapnel was fixed with his brain, causing him to feel virtually no human connection whatsoever. So basically he's a serial killer. He, well, no, he's a psychopath. But there you go. You understand. Yeah. Uh, he has this get, get... You can be a psychopath and be a CEO. <laughs> Massacre has this quick, get rich, quick scheme. Mm -hmm. He proposes to a soda company that he will wear their competitor's t-shirt and he will kill everyone in sight of New York City for $12 million. Wow, he should have charged more. I think so, too. I actually could also see a company uh, planning this uh, marketing plan in the next 10 years. Yeah. Massacre has a big showdown at Grand Central Station. 
Otto, as Spider-Man, arrives to fight Massacre, managing to get Massacre's gun away from him, crying out for the public's opinion for what he should do to this man for all the atrocities he has committed. In their sadness and anger, the public cry out that Spider-Man should just finish him off. Peter, Force Ghost Peter, subconsciously (laughs) pleads that Otto should give him a chance, and Massacre cries in fear that Spider-Man will actually kill him claiming that this is the first emotion that Massacre has felt in years. Spider-Man, as Otto, is not swayed, and he shoots Massacre in the face. Mm -hmm. Now, Ashley, this is the moment that everyone in the Marvel Universe knew that something was wrong with Spider-Man. This is a classic villain mind swap situation. So I want to ask you, Ashley, are there any other superhero slash supervillains that this premise could have worked for. So what do you say, Ashley? Which supervillain in any universe, any book, would you like to see get an extended run pretending to be their opposite hero? This is a really hard question. It's also an interesting question, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it has to be one of your more science-y uh-huh. based characters. It also has to be somebody, a villain that's not completely you know, beyond approach, like beyond hope. Uh, Someone that could be redeemed. Not necessarily, or it has to be a villain who's particularly clever. Like, I don't care to see the Joker as Batman. Oh, no, certainly not. But I mean, like for the, for the geek history lesson continuity of all, like what about like a Dormammu in the body of Dr. Strange? Ooh, that's not bad. You know, which you could do with magic. And I think, um, I don't think Dormammu is necessarily beyond reproach, but I think that Dr. Strange has an abrasive enough personality mm-hmm. that it might take a minute. Um, and he's also done things that maybe go against some of like the Avengers stricter ethic codes. Mm-hmm. So I think that he could get away with it for a little while. Um, Maybe like a Zod Superman. Interesting. So Zod in the body of Superman. Although Zod has the powers of Superman. I know. So like, what is the point of it other than the status, right? Like maybe if you're trying to like rebuild a Krypton colony or something. Um, I think it might be interesting to see Lex Luthor in Superman's body. Sure. You know, because to give him the power of the Kryptonians and Mm -hmm. see what he does with it, he would be terrible with it. Mm -hmm. I think you that's I think that's the second part of it. I think you need the power swap. You need the villain yeah. to not have the same powers. That when he, That's a good call. That when they take over the hero, they get an upgrade. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think of who would be good a good swap for Batman. But I don't know if there is anyone. I don't know because I think he's mortal. Yeah. Um. I mean, Two-Face would be an interesting swap. I mean, there would have been a time when I would have told you that you should swap um Red Hood and Nightwing. But now they've just basically made Red Hood kind of a okay guy who's yeah. in the Bat family. Yeah. Interesting. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think about some other people. Well, because the X-Men swippity swap all the time in terms mm-hmm. of like their alliances, right? Like you could say like Charles and Magneto, but they've each had times where they've fallen into the hero or villain role. They've been the villain or they've yeah, been the hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not as interesting. I agree. I agree. All right. So let's get into the personal life, or as I like to call it, Otto's terrible time with women. So Otto had to integrate himself into Peter Parker's life because he's pretending to be Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. And he's actually not that bad at it. He helps out May go to therapy. She gets special treatment. She like goes like, oh, wow. Like, I get to see you so much, Peter. Here's some wheat cakes. Um, (laughs) He goes back to college to complete his doctorate because he's so mad that Peter isn't a doctor. Mm -hmm. He tries to make an attempt to solidify his relationship with Mary Jane Watson. And what's kind of funny about this is that Otto kind of thinks that everything should fall into place with his relationship with Mary Jane because he's like, hey, I'm Peter Parker and that they should automatically click. But they don't because he's Otto Octavius Mm -hmm. and Mary Jane can tell that something is wrong. Yeah. Mary Jane has a tough time adjusting to Peter in his new way of thinking and believing at the very least that there will always be time for each other. And the final nail in the coffin of this relationship is when her club is set on fire. She puts her faith that Peter, Spider-Man, will come to her rescue like always. And when a spider bot informs Otto of the fire, he redirects the call to the fire department. Mm-hmm. Um, Otto also has a run with Black Cat, Felicia Hardy, when she's in the middle of a heist. When the two interact, Felicia tries to act out her usual seductive charm, which Otto has no time for. Mm-hmm. Um, now, why would Felicia try to seduce Spider-Man, Ashley? Because she's done it many times before. Because they have dated. That's correct. <laughs> uh, but Otto's reaction as Spider-Man is to deck her in the face. And he knocks out her tooth, 
He webs her to a wall and he leaves her to be picked up by the police. Well, because the interesting thing about comic book Otto Octavius, Mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of us are most familiar with the much mentioned Alfred Molina portrayal of the character. Wonderful Alfred Molina. Is, uh, you know, does comic book Otto Octavius have any experience with women at all? He, well, if you remember from our GHL, mm. oh, he has a little bit. Remember, he has the fiance in college. Yeah. He also has a lot of terrible mother issues. Yeah. And he once tried to marry Aunt May. Right. But he's never been married. Uh, he has been technically married to Aunt May, I believe. Oh, okay. I believe that guy actually got married. Okay. But it, but he's not he's not good with anybody. Not women a or man. Women yeah, or men. Yeah. He's very much like, you're going to listen to me and shut up. <laughs> um, so... What these women fail to realize is that Peter is a different man and a different man comes with different tastes. So while Otto is going to college for his doctoral degree, he meets Ana Maria Marconi. She's awesome. She is a little person. She is smart. She is witty. She loves to cook. And the lovely thing about this is that Otto thinks she's beautiful. She is and, beautiful. And he falls in love with her and her mind. Mm-hmm. Um, after the execution of Massacre, uh, the Avengers wish to speak to Spider-Man about his recent murder including also the brutally beating of Jester and Screwball, who are nothing more than harmless, goofy villains. The uh, The Avengers put Spider-Man through a series of tests, and they figure out, they prove without a shadow of a doubt, that Spider-Man is positively, absolutely not a scroll. I mean, it's a fair question, mm-hmm. given uh, the Avengers. That's the one thing they determine. They're like, okay, he's not a scroll. They're like, yeah, the only one who gets rampant murder is Iron Man. <laughs> yep. Have you gotten the memo? Uh, the Avengers show Spider-Man the full results, and Otto catches an anomaly in the brain patterns that the Avengers did not see. Mm. And luckily for Otto, Tony Stark was busy doing something else, probably having drinks in Morocco. <laughs> and Otto sees this blip in his diagnostics and realizes that Peter Parker's essence is still alive in his mind. Dun, dun. Otto immediately goes inside his mind palace. (laughs) And the two of them have a confrontation in the subconscious plane of existence. Peter challenges Otto on what's the right thing to do in the scenario. Otto stole Peter's body and it's time to show that he actually learned something from being a hero. And Otto confesses that the right thing to do is actually maintain control because the world needs a superior Spider-Man. Peter attempts to overwhelm Otto with his memories of love, family, and friendships and all the aspects that have been Spider-Man man's biggest strengths and auto counters with spider-man's biggest weaknesses especially his poverty personified mm. and these anxieties and these fears manifest through personal tragedies and villains like the death of gwen stacy and for the moment this allows auto to completely erase all the last vestiges of peter parker from the body of peter parker now Ashley, I want to ask you this. Sure. Uh, writer Dan Slott revealed that Peter was a force ghost in Otto's mind in issue one of Superior Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Is this too soon? Should he have hidden that reveal a little bit longer? I would say yes and no. I'm betting that there was a note based on people's reaction to issue 700 that we had to assure them that we weren't killing Peter Parker forever. Mm-hmm. Um. I kind of wish for the sake of the narrative that we'd left it a little longer, but also like, did we ever think this wasn't no, going to happen? It's, it's the same thing so. as like every time Batman is not Bruce Wayne, it's, it's always yeah. going to come back around. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm of, I'm of two minds. Right. It's not the worst two minds, like the superior Spider-Man and sure, Peter why Parker. Not? Yep. Exactly like that. Interesting. So are you, you could have the mind of Otto Octavius inside of you right now. I hope not. You could have the mind of, Someone like Tex Willerman, favorite GHL listener and owner of Six Piggly Wigglies in Texas. Absolutely Inside not. your mind right now. We would never know it. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. Ashley, uh, we're going to travel right now. Sure. We're going to travel to the year 2099. Okie dokie. In the year 2099, the best of all years. Uh, Miguel O'Hara. Who is that, Ashley? He's, uh, what's his name? He's another Spider-Man. I don't remember which Spider-Man he is. He's another spider Spider-Man 2099. He's uh How did you say you didn't remember who he was and then just say who he was? I couldn't remember. Oh. I wanted to call him the Scarlet Spider. Oh, you weren't doing a bit. You were being honest. Either. No, I was being honest. I, I thought you were doing a bit. No, I <laughs> couldn't remember what he I was like, I don't know, he's some other Spider-Man who's voiced by Oscar Isaac. Uh I read the first volume when we did that issue that episode 
eight years ago. <laughs> Ashley, can you give us a brief origin? <laughs> no. On Spider-Man 2099. I, I can't. <laughs> I'm Oscar Isaac. I was naked in Dune. Maybe I'll be naked in the next movie. Who knows? I think, I think I'm Mexican and Irish. And I think, <laughs> and I think I break into a lab because I'm kind of a jerk. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> and I think um, okay. Batman Beyond ripped me off. <laughs> That's true. That's uh, true. So now I'm a Spider Man. <laughs> Uh, also, extra figure spotlight. Jason has an extra figure of Miguel O'Hara. <laughs> That's not the extra figure extra spotlight. Figure. So. It is in 2099. <laughs> um, yeah, Miguel O'Hara is a is a geneticist who lives in 2099 and in he, Nueva York. In Nueva New York, and he does some experimentation on himself. They were trying to recreate the Age of Heroes Spider Man, and he turned himself into Spider Man. He's basically just like Peter Parker, except he has a badass costume. He's Hispanic, and he has claws and. Fat things yes. um he actually has a sting he can and a cape uh he has a web cape. it's a glider cape actually but um he can um he can inject you with a, a poison that will like knock you out oh, like a sting yeah he can sting you That's yeah, cool. yeah yeah um and i think i could be wrong about this but i think he's slightly stronger than peter parker that sounds right to me um yeah I, um and from the little bit that I have heard from across the universe, they are short, trying to sort of represent him as that, like, he is more, he is, like, the most powerful Spider-Man, because mm -hmm. he's, like, the ultimate Spider-Man, anyways. Uh, no, but, Miles is the ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, so, Miguel O'Hara is surprised in the year 2099 by the appearance of dinosaurs and World War I biplanes. And as it turns out, there is a tear in the fabric of time, you know, or some of us would call Tuesday. Miguel investigates over at the company they works at Alchemax, believing that they must be behind it. He only he's only to learn that this tear is affecting the very existence of CEO and founder of Alchemax, Tyler Stone. And if you remember, everybody, our Spider-Man 2099 lesson, GHL 85, you'll know from that that Tyler Stone is actually secretly Miguel's birth father. Mm -hmm. So if Tyler Stone doesn't exist, neither does Spider Man 2099. Uh, Ashley, why don't you tell us who Tyler Stone is? <laughs> Miguel's dad, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I literally had no idea until you told me just now. <laughs> um, so if Tyler Stone is erased from history, Miguel will be erased history as well. So Miguel hops back in time to the modern day to track down the anomaly that is causing all this damage across the time frame. Um, in present day, Max Modal, the owner of Horizon Labs, where Otto slash Peter works, is arrested under federal charges. And Liz Allen, owner of Allen Chemical and former girlfriend of Peter Parker, becomes Horizon Labs' majority shareholder. It's revealed that her partner is Tiberius Stone, the ancestor of Tyler Stone. And he has set up an elaborate ploy to take hostile takeover of Horizon. And because of this takeover, Alan Chemicals gets to claim every single asset of Horizon, including everything that Otto slash Peter have worked on publicly for Spider-Man all the way down to the web fluid. That is their trademark. Uh, Miguel arrives in the present day just to find the Spider-Man of this era. And Otto as Spider-Man decides to take the direct approach as Spider-Man to confront Tiberius Stone on this takeover Horizon Labs. Uh, Miguel as Spider-Man 2099 intervenes to protect Tiberius as he is Miguel's biological father. Both these Spider-Mans fight and and Miguel is confused as heck that Peter Parker does not remember him because they met in Spider-Man 2099 meets Spider-Man in 1995. Go Google it. They met in a crossover one shot because Spider-Man 2099 was so popular. So technically by the continuity, Peter Parker would know exactly who Spider-Man 2099 is. You think Tiberius' parents were Trekkies? Of course they are. Because that is not a real name. Uh, after the fight, Miguel uh, takes Tiberius with him and hides him away. And Miguel learns that this anomaly is the turning point of, of the creation of Alchemex and the creation of his very corporate slash Blade Runner future in 2099. It is very Blade Runner. Yes. Uh, heading over to Horizon Labs, Otto begins removing all of his tech from the premises and is caught by a couple of co-workers. Um, furious at... Otto's basic behavior over recent weeks, Max Modell, the head of Horizon Labs, warns him that if he takes his stuff off the Horizon premises and leaves, he never has to come back. He will be fired. And Otto's like, whatever, and leaves. 
Yeah, sounds about right. Yep. To the shock of the Horizon team, um, Otto knocks out uh, the other Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2029, before he explains how to stop an imminent temporal event which is going to destroy Horizon Labs. See, this temporal tear has been just causing havoc everywhere. Mm -hmm. The Horizon team figures out a way to stop the destruction, but they will need Reverium and Peter Parker to solve the equation to cancel out the destruction vibrations because he has a very, you know, through his Spider-Man career, he's very experienced with this fake Marvel metal called Revere Beam. I'm not certain if that's how you said it. I just don't know. It's a fake metal. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like vibrating. Um, Otto, you see, recently just erased all the Peter Parker memories. Peter Parker was an expert in this. Oh, whoa. Uh -oh. We have some problems there. Um, he tells everyone to evacuate. And Otto like basically sits in a corner and is like, think, 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 remember, remember, remember. <laughs> Just imagining Homer Simpson, like think, 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 think. Um, with one minute to spare, Otto comes up with an answer and he enters it and it's completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Horizon Labs is destroyed <laughs> and it leaves a huge crater. This is actually what happens. That's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> After the dust settles, um, Max literally. Yep, Max. Yeah, thank you. Max and his team quickly set to work, and they're like, "We we, we got a way to save Spider Man through temporal mechanics, and all this other stuff like that." And they're able to save Spider Man, sort of pulling him out of time. Um, during this time, uh, which was over about, it's estimated to be, it could be about a day. It seems to be about like nine hours that he was gone from the time stream. Otto comes back. He has no recollection of where he was or where what he did for these nine hours. Yeah, because he um, was dead. We're going to... No, he was somewhere else I know he in was. time, <laughs> I which know. we're going to learn about. Uh, the staff of Horizon decide to go on a new venture to salvage what they got and start over. Max Modal, hell, head of Horizon Labs, cuts ties with Spider-Man and fires Peter permanently. This inspires Otto Octavius to start making moves of his own. He starts his own company called Parker Industries. Anna Maria joins him on the venture as a business partner, and um, he starts... Otto is like, this is the perfect time. I'm going to be fully Peter Parker. I'm not going to be Otto Octavius anymore. I'm going to create this company from my own steam, and we're going to see what happen. I love that nobody in the comic book universe like looks at their life and looks at their choices and looks at the science in the universe and is like, you know, my company exploded. Maybe I should do literally anything Maybe else. I shouldn't do business anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should be a farmer. <laughs> All right. So, Ashley, do you know where Otto Octavius as the superior Spider-Man went during this mysterious nine hours to a day? I don't remember. No. I'm going to say he went to um, the astral plane and um, mind melded with the Spider-Man of the dark dimension, who is of course just a giant shrieking spider. That's a lot. That's a lot of plot. That's a lot of runway right there. Thank you. Marvel can hire me at any time. Uh, all incorrect. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm sorry. He experienced the Marvel comics event known as spider verse. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot that spider Verse was happening at the same time. Well, it didn't. You see, this was a sort of, unanswered question yep. that Dan Slott introduced because this mysterious nine hours to a day was not explained until the Spider-Verse comics event happened about a year later. Yeah, but it would have been percolating. Very Doctor Who-ish of them. Uh, actually, well, Dan Slott loves Doctor Who. That's true. Uh, actually, I, I want to ask you this question. Uh, I don't know if you've ever answered this on the podcast. Do you, who's your favorite alternate Spider-Verse version of Spider-Man? Gwen, easy. Uh, Ghost Spider or Spider-Gwen? not go spider spider Gwen, yeah yeah uh why i have always really liked gwen stacy and i think that it's a really interesting spin on all of the tropes that we like about spider-man but just presented through a different lens i just like her the best and you know might shock you to learn that as a as a woman i identify with another character who's uh who who's, who's another favorite who else do you dig i like silk a lot too mm -hmm. um whose origin is directly out of the a Spider Verse event, or it's, right it's, before it's the Spider Verse right event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think Miles is really great. Um, my favorite joke is Spider's Man, <laughs> the uh, Spider Man who's just a bunch of mm -hmm. spiders. I have the panel saved on my phone where he's introduced for the first. Like, I think it's so mm -hmm. hilarious. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah, all the ladies basically. Nice. Well, that's fine. Uh, so in this mysterious period, this is exactly what happened. 
Otto was transported to the year 2099. Again. There he built a holographic version AI of Anna Maria to help him figure out a way back home. And when he attempts to travel back in time, he does so. But instead of traveling back in time, he accidentally travels into a parallel dimension. Mm. One with a recently deceased Spider-Man, including one where he found a Spider-Man that was a part of the Fantastic Four or the Fantastic Five, as they were called in that universe. Eventually, he hopped to a couple of dimensions and he found out that all these Spider-Mans were dead across the universe. And so he decided to, in order to figure out who was killing each universe of Spider-Man, Otto was like, I'm going to travel, I'm going to gather intelligence, and I'm going to create a Spider-Man army. He eventually traveled to a universe with an Indian Spider-Man who was under attack by a being called an Inheritor, which uh, we will later learn are um, the, the sort of like other dimensional creatures that are, look like Victorian vampires. They mm -hmm. were introduced by J. Michael Straczynski. Uh, Moreland is the most famous one. Mm -hmm. uh, Indian Spider-Man, by the way, great look. Yep. Um, so he got Indian Spider-Man and eventually Otto recruited a whole team of Indian Spider-Man, Spider-Monkey, Spider-Man Noir. Spider-Monkey, yeah. Spider-Man Noir, which you know, of course, from the Spider-Verse movie. Six-armed Spider-Man and Spider-Girl. Ashley, who is Spider-Girl? Spider-Girl is uh, the best. She is. She's the best. But, but who is but she? But underserved as a character. Uh, she is the MC2 daughter of Peter and Mary Jane. What is MC2? It is uh, an initiative from the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, I think it's the late 90s. Um, which imagines a new generation of superheroes and it was largely aimed at bringing in a younger female reader audience well it was yeah it was like uh, is, is seen as the second generation of yeah. marvel and spider girl is mayday parker yep and she wears ben riley's suit she runs Ben riley's suit because she finds it in the basement yeah uh because at this point peter is a police scientist and he's no longer a spider she's been around about four times as long as gwen and has about a fourth of the stories mm -hmm. of gwen and she has uh the a younger brother named benji yes so, okay, so with this army, Otto has taken the fight against Karn and Morlin and the Inheritors. Um, and his own team during this event met a second Spider-Man team, which included people like uh, Spider-Gwen and Miles Morales mm -hmm. and Peter Parker from Earth-616. Mm -hmm. Earth-616, of course, is the Earth that Otto is from. Yeah. Now, the superior and the amazing Spider-Man fought until Otto revealed that he believed Peter to be before he took over his mind, which Peter exploited by surrendering and challenging Otto to prove his superiority by killing him. Otto refused, as he believed killing Peter would wipe him from the time stream, uh, and Peter knocked him out in one single blow. Now, eventually they had to work together. They joined the spider teams. They fought these inheritors. They fought Moreland. They fight these people killing all the Spider-Mans across the multiverse. And when Peter made a comment regarding Otto's holographic assistant looking like Anna Maria, Otto realized that Peter was from a later point in time mm -hmm. from the Earth 616 timeline and therefore realizes that somewhere in the future he will lose as a superior Spider-Man and Peter will take over the body again. Uh, eventually, they defeat the Inheritors, and Otto was resigned to return to his home time with his memories of this battle released, except for he left instructions with Anna Maria, his AI holographic assistant, to reactivate in 100 days, no matter what. Mm. Now, Ashley, Otto has lost all his memory of Spider-Verse thanks to time travel shenanigans. And now I'm going to tell you about the Superior Spider-Man's final battle and his greatest adversary. Now, let's talk about the one villain who actually takes down the Superior Spider-Man. His own ego. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if, if, if Peter Parker <laughs> Spider-Man's weakness is poverty, the Superior Spider-Man's weakness is... Hubris. Hubris. <laughs> <laughs> He's Julius Caesar. Yep. No, the Green Goblin. Uh, Ashley, would you like to give a brief origin of the Green Goblin? So, <laughs> I 
don't think I can do a good Willem Dafoe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm something of a scientist myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this one last time. <laughs> Let's try this one last time, Peter. <laughs> uh, I'm something of a scientist. Don't tell Harry. So basically, like, he, you know, moves into this lighthouse. He fights Batman. <laughs> he fights Batman There's a in mermaid. a lighthouse. It's weird. <laughs> I would love that movie. <laughs> if, if you want to GHL on Robert Eggers films, let us know. Mm-hmm. At Geek Uh Yeah, no, he is um, arguably Peter Parker's arch, Spider-Man's arch nemesis, and he is the evil father of his best friend, Harry. Yes, yeah, so he's a he's a scientist slash millionaire guy, kind of a Lex Luthor type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so because of Spider-Man's strange and brutal actions of late, it arouses the suspicion of Carly Cooper, who is a police detective and former girlfriend of Peter Parker. Before Peter, Peter died, got so many girlfriends. Peter My is God. a player. He pulls. Yes, he does. Peter, before he died in Otto's body back in <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man Seven Hundred, yeah. um, he got to talk to Carly. And in this da- dying auto body, Peter tried to tell Carly that it was actually Peter. Parker. He's like, I'm actually Peter Parker. I'm trapped in here. She didn't believe him. She shot him. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep those comments to myself. <laughs> now, after months and months and months mm-hmm. of Spider-Man killing, punching, yeah. being a real ass. Carly's kind of doubting herself now. Mm -hmm. She's haunted by the possibility that she probably let Peter die. Mm -hmm. So she starts an investigation that leads her to find out that Spider-Man is secretly funded by a secret bank account that belongs to Otto Octavius. Mm. And she soon figures out the truth about Otto and Peter and is working towards exposing it. But before she could expose it to the world, she had kidnapped by Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. Now, the Goblin during this entire time has been working underground in New York City. He's been building an army to put the city under siege. And he hacks Otto's spider bots to ignore the facial recognitions of anyone wearing a goblin mask so mm-hmm. that his goblin army can move undetected. He eventually learns about Carly's investigation and discovers her re- her revelation about Spider-Man. The goblin launches a full-on assault in the city. Otto is overwhelmed. Eventually, the two of them meet face to face, and Norman Osborn reveals that he knows it is Otto Octavius inside the body of Spider-Man, and the Goblin offers a partnership between the two of them, where Otto would be his second, and that really just <laughs> grills Otto Octavius to the point of 11. He just, yeah, that's, that grinds his gears, as one would say. Mm, he's a grilled octopus. Yep. He says no, and the Goblin escalates his all-out assault, attacking everyone in Peter's life. Uh, The Goblin reveals that this assault uh, is a vendetta specifically against Otto because he's like, look, I'm not too happy that the number two villain successfully killed Peter when I've been trying for years. Mm -hmm. So he destroys anything that holds sentimentality for Otto, including his childhood home, the research center where his octopus arms were created and the boneyard where all of Otto's inventions were kept. Even the soda factory where Otto did his first heroic act as Spider-Man and Norman kidnaps his girlfriend, Anna Maria. Now, when the spirit of Spider-Man was in the subway, he had a choice to save a young child who turned out to be named Amy Chen. Otto Octavius hesitated As saving Amy, he was like, I might not make it out of this. I might injure myself. And if I do this, it'll prevent me from searching for Anna Maria. The consciousness of Peter Parker revealed himself and pushed Otto to save the child. Because he was like, look, there's no time for planning, man. You've got to do what's right. Otto realized in this moment that he had failed being the superior Spider-Man because he had considered letting Amy Chen die. And decided to let Peter Parker take the control of his body back because that would be the only way that they could save Anna Maria, who he truly loved. Mm -hmm. So Otto erases himself. He erases his memories. He erases his love for Anna Maria. So Peter takes full control. And Peter Parker is now back as Spider-Man. And he immediately jumps into the fight with Goblin, which surprises the Green Goblin because he... Uh, he believed that Peter would prioritize saving Anna Maria because he thought he was dealing with Otto Octavius. Mm -hmm. But Peter maneuvered the goblin to throw one of his sharp blades to land near Anna Maria, and so she was able to free herself. Um, Anna Maria, after she's rescued, voices a concern to Spider-Man that Peter might have died, and Spider-Man tells her that she is right, realizing in the first moment 
that this is a very serious relationship that Otto Octavius created with his body, Mm -hmm. that Anna Maria and Peter Parker are now boyfriend and girlfriend, and he has absolutely no feelings for Anna Maria. Mm -hmm. So he's a little like, with this. So in the aftermath of Superior Spider-Man, Peter adjusts the changes that Otto laid out for Spider-Man. He has to deal with running Parker Industries. Um, He finds out that Spider-Man is not well-liked by the public again. And this time, he is perceived as a jackbooted menace instead of just a regular kind of annoying menace. Uh, And now that might be the end of Superior Spider-Man, the series, but Otto ain't gone and neither is the Superior Spider-Man. Because if you remember, I told you... And he told this Anna Maria hologram to wake up in a hundred days. Mm-hmm. So Otto used the technology he acquired in 2099, the best of years, to create a copy of his consciousness right before being sent back. And he stored that copy in his gauntlets for a hundred days. And when the Anna Maria hologram activated, his consciousness was alive in a machine, in a spider bot successfully. And through a series of supervillain shenanigans, Otto succeeded and created an improved clone with spliced DNA from him and Peter Parker. And he called it the Proto-Clone. He made a new suit for himself with a superior pattern to the superior Spider-Man suit, and Otto dubbed himself the Superior Octopus. And then he went and worked for Hydra for a while, which is what you do. Mm -hmm. Uh, Later, Otto switches sides and resumes his former career in heroism in San Francisco under the false name of Elliot Tolliver, and he gained a position teaching at the Horizon University under the alias as Elliot Tolliver, and he fought crime as the Superior Spider-Man in San Francisco, even sort of coming to an equilibrium with Peter Parker. Even though San Francisco doesn't have a lot of tall buildings. Hey, man, he's the superior Spider-Man. He figured it out. I guess. Uh, Later, he was targeted by Norman Osborn, the Spider-Man of Earth 44145, our least favorite Earth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that multiverse. Uh, And the only way that Otto, see, Otto just has a thing. He can't beat Norman Osborn for some reason, no matter what multiverse he comes from. Otto, during this time, was approached by Mephisto, uh, Ashley, would you like to give a brief origin on Mephisto? Uh, <laughs> Mephisto is just about every supporting character in the MCU that hasn't been confirmed as not being Mephisto. He's Marvel Comics version of the devil, one of a couple. Mm-hmm. He's Lucifer, basically. He's Lucifer without being called Lucifer. So Mephisto is like, yo, Norman, I, or excuse me, yo, Otto, I have a way to defeat Norman and gives him a plan. And Anna Maria begs him, begs Otto to not throw away the good inside himself. Otto accepted Mephisto's bargain and was restored to his original Otto Octavius body and the state of mind from before he ever mind swapped with Peter Parker. So every lesson of heroism, every lesson of love that we have ever learned uh, is ripped away. That was the price of Mephisto. And thus, the superior Spider-Man was truly gone. Endeth. Yep. Uh, And despite, you know, everything sort of being finite or a second act in comic books, um, Ashley, I want to ask you, do you think do you think this story could have gone the distance? Like, let's go back to the original series before he gave his mind to Peter Parker. Do you think if, you know, we weren't trying to tie in, we were actually going with a story and not going with tying into movies or bringing back to Peter Parker? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think the superior, how long do you think we could have ran the title of superior Spider-Man? That's interesting. Before they would have brought back Peter Parker anyway, like kind of like similar like Kyle Rayner. And they eventually said, well, we got to bring back Hal Jordan or Wally West. And, oh, we got to bring back Barry Allen. Three years tops. Well, we did get three years. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's about as long as, because. Well, actually we got, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. We got one year, but we got 33 issues. Even if you consider or even if you don't consider the Sony memos about how there's no way Peter Parker is going to be any, or or Spider-Man is going to be anything other than Peter Parker. Peter Parker, Spider-Man is the most important character in all of Marvel comics. Mm -hmm. So I think there was no way. I think you could, could have had three years of it. Absolute tops, Um, which is too bad because I think it's a good idea and I think it was really well done. And I think this is a great series. I agree. But yeah, I think three, they would have been lucky to get three years, especially because of how badly people comported themselves online. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen it. Me too. I would have loved to have seen more. He was fun on teams too. He was really fun on teams. All right. Let's get to 
That's the it for this GHL. Let's get to the recommended reading. What is that, Miss Ashley? The recommended reading is where if you go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading, Professor Jason is going to have a bunch of recommendations in case you want to actually read some of these stories. And I highly recommend that you do. I do too. Uh, and everything that you pick up there helps support the Mind University. So the first one, this is pretty simple. The first volume is Superior Spider-Man Volume 1. Mm. This is the six-issue volume, not the complete collection, because the complete collection I looked on there is so far out of print that it's super expensive, whereas Volume 1 is sort of affordable. Mm. So I'd recommend going with that one. Also, Superior Spider-Man Volume 2 is also my second choice. And my third choice is there's a fun little series that kind of got all the tie-ins and the Avenging Spider-Man tie-ins, and it's called the Superior Spider-Man Companion. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's, it's, Superior Spider-Man interacting with the Avengers showing up in other books. It's a really... Uh, it's like side quests. Exactly, yeah. exactly. All right, Ashley, let's get to the honor roll. What's that? The honor roll is where if you review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, we will read whatever you write as long as you give us five stars. And if you're a nice international friend, you have to email it and screenshot it to geekhistorylesson at gmail.com because iTunes won't let us see your reviews. And I'm happy to report here, Ashley, that we have... An international listener. Great, because I didn't have one. <laughs> uh, this is, we have five stars here uh, from Bermuda. Bermuda, that's so cool. The, it's, the, the review is entitled Big Geek on De Small Island. Uh, oh, that is how that they actually wrote it. I'm not making fun of this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, guys, Vaughn's uh, from Bermuda here. I drive for a living. Y'all keep me entertained on all my shifts. I've just discovered your pod over the last month. You guys fill in the blanks on so many of the characters I was unable to catch up with through the years. I'm binging every one of your episodes currently. You will have a listener from here on forward. Keep up the good work. Love y'all. Big up to GHL. Yay. That's so cool. <laughs> So Vaughn's, um, um, thank you. Give me a multiple block. <laughs> thank you so much for the review from Bermuda. We're so happy to keep you company on your drive. It's very lovely. You got a guest house? <laughs> you want visitors? <laughs> uh, welcome into the GHL Teacher's Lounge, Vaughn's, uh, where Professor Tolliver is here. Um, and be really careful. He's put up a chair in the corner with a helmet. Mm. He's trying to convince literally anybody with a large bank account or a very fit body to sit down mm -hmm. and just don't worry about it. I would not sit in that chair, Vaughn. I would not do it. So be but welcome. Thank you so much for that five star <laughs> review. If you want to leave a five star review of us, uh, do go do it on Apple Podcasts. Be like Vaughn's. And also, if you really enjoyed this podcast and you have a Spider Man friend out there who really enjoys it, please tell them about this podcast because we are on every podcast. Format. We just recently joined iHeartRadio. Um, so every everywhere you can find podcasts, we're there. Uh, Ashley, where can they follow GHL on social media? You can follow us at geekhistorylesson.com. And I recommend putting a slash blog at the end because we have great new blogs coming out every week. You can find us at facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson on Twitter at GHL Podcast because they have character restrictions and on Instagram at geekhistorylesson because they don't have character restrictions. You can follow Ashley on Instagram and Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. You can follow myself on Twitter and Instagram at Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. And don't forget to check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash Jawin. Uh, uh, and Ashley, I have a very special surprise here for our final segment of the podcast, which most people know it as Stick Around. Oh, who said it? So we have our very first hashtag stick around sound effect. I asked a couple podcasts ago, I said I would send three Superman things in a package to the winning sound effect. Uh, if you're international, I'll send you some digital comics. But we have our very first one. This is still open. If you want to send a hashtag sound effect in send it to geek history lesson at gmail.com. We will play it on the episode, but this first one is from Pedro Nuno Lopez from Portugal who made this amazing. I think this stick around. It's so cool. Uh, they also sent us a letter. Dear professors Inman and Robinson. My <laughs> name is Pedro from Portugal. Longtime listener of the podcast. Thank you so much for the show and for bringing it to us out here. You are an amazing team. Heard your request for a hashtag stick around sound effect and I could not resist the challenge. I went for something a li bit literal with the stick and sticky just for fun bit and also <laughs> for something a touch creepy in the end. I had fun doing it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I love this sound effect. So do I. Stick around. 
I will also say that uh, I recently learned through the power of 23 and me that I have I'm a little teeny bit Portuguese so this makes me very proud ah, cool uh, so thank you Pedro for that amazing sound effect again it, it, we're, we're still open here yeah because um, right now he's running away with that Pedro is, is, <laughs> it has won this right now we have no other sound effects so we're just saying like get those in to geekhesterlesson at gmail.com uh, and Pedro if we select you as the winner we will announce you on the show uh, I will send you some amazing digital comics so yeah. don't worry about it so hashtag stick around here Ashley do you think we will see at this time of this recording we have not seen Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse part one mm-hmm. so I want to ask you a question do you think we'll see the superior Spider-Man in Spider-Verse 2 no why uh, because I think it's setting up the animated movie that's coming after that. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you think we'll see Superior Spider-Man in Spider-Verse 3? No. I think we'll see female villains in Spider-Verse 3. Interesting. I think the best place to do Superior Spider-Man would have been in live action. In the MCU. When we did the live action ripoff of Into the Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. Um, the less good version of Into the Spider-Verse. Because they had Alfred Molina back. And then mm-hmm. Alfred Molina is also a really wonderful voice actor. So you could have shot an entire movie after that where you wouldn't need to have him on set, but you could have him record narr- narration and, be ma- the voice. and maybe do a bookend at the mm-hmm. beginning and the end of the movie. Um, it would be fun to see Tom Holland play villains. Yeah, yeah. and it would stretch that character a little bit. We mm-hmm. haven't seen a ton of character growth from Peter in the MCU. Yeah. I think that would have been the place to do it. I also don't think we're going to get any octopus characters in Spider-Man 2 because we did live Spider-Verse 2. I I apologize, yes, because Mm -hmm. we did live in Into the Spider-Verse. Well, it's funny because I kind of agree with you and again, everybody that's that's listening to this from the future and have seen this movie already knows, but um, they already know the answer to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I kind of think we won't see him in Spider-Verse 2 because he's a little bit similar to Spider-Man 2099. Mm -hmm. But the more I thought about it, I was like, Man, wouldn't it be a fun twist if the ending of Spider-Verse 2 is you find out that the villain is an evil Peter Parker? Like yeah, that would be cool. Like it is mm-hmm. the superior Spider-Man from another universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then you could do that twist where like Peter B. Parker is the one that recognizes him as Otto. He's yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's Otto. And then you could even do this thing about like, how do you know? And he's like, well, he did it to me for a year or something like that, mm. you know, almost caused, almost like almost led to my divorce. You know, my, my first one, mm. not my second one. We're, we're fine now. We just had Mayday. It's okay. Here she is. Wah! You know, <laughs> And then we meet Mayday in the movie too. But I, I I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, that would be a funny, distinct villain if Miles met a Peter Parker that looks exactly like Peter B. Parker, thinks he's a good guy, and he's the villain. I think it's too smart for, for superhero movies. You're probably right. I think it is too smart because I think it's I think an executive would hear that and find it confusing. You're probably right. Just speaking prove me wrong. I hope to be, uh, you know, prove me wrong. But, uh, but to me, I'm like, I could see how somebody who is not as familiar with the lore would be like, that's too confusing. Don't do that. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Well, I think that was an amazing stick around. You don't think it was a superior. It was a superior stick around. It's a good sound. Effect, it is a good sound. It's a All really right. Good sound Thank you so much for <laughs> listening to geek history lesson this week. I am Jason, the slightly not so superior anymore Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson and Professor Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Superiorly, the class is dismissed.